Getting it and creating a group mode, or I'm just gonna group it right off the bat. So I'm gonna freeze transformations. Oh, look at that. Uh, show my grid. Let's put its pivot right at the grid. There we go. Edit, leave by type history. Okay, great. And I'm gonna call this FK control generic because I don't know where I'm going to put it just yet but what I'm going to do is group it to itself by using control G and group FK control and I'm just going to cut to the chase and just make this control snap to it rather than having to put the control there then another group and then parenting it just another way to do the same thing so select the joint control select that group constraint point constraint orient and it puts it exactly where I want it I can take these constraints and delete them because I don't need them anymore and if I check my local rotation axis, you see that they match exactly. Now, I probably want this to be a little bit more interesting, uh, more aligned with that joint. So since it has that parent there, I can actually go in here and scale it down. I'm going to hold down J and rotate to snap. And that looks like what I want. But you notice that my rotations are all off. That's okay, because based on its parent, if I freeze the transformations, it goes back to matching exactly. Oh, that's perfect. So what I'm going to do now is duplicate it. And I would know I want to go to this wrist, but just in case I had built it, rotate it, or something like that, I'm going to do the same thing again. And point. And orient constrain it. And then kill those constraints. Perfect. And I'll do it one more time. Duplicate. Point. Orient. And delete. And you notice how they line right up. That's exactly what I want. And I'm going to go in here and just change this to elbow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> shoulder. Let's say FK shoulder. Typo, but it's okay. FK elbow. And FK wrist. Close enough. And now what I'm going to do is make it so they can control these joints as well. So what I'm going to do is select the first shoulder. Shift select this joint. Constrain orient. So it's just straight up constraint. It's a one to one. Do the same thing for the elbow, and do the same thing for the wrist. There we go. And right now they're not going to do anything because I'm still controlling this joint using the IK handle that we created earlier. But by default, we do get an FK IK switch for free built into the IK handle. So if I turn that off, my joints turn green, and what you'll notice is now I can control those joints using my FK controls. Make sure they're all zero. Okay, great. Put that back. So what I'm going to do is make a little switch that go between these two guys. So on, on this I, IK control here, there's any, you can put it anywhere you want. I tend to put it on an IK handle. Uh, but it really can go anywhere, because really I, the reason I put on the IK handle is because I know I'm going to be keying that IK handle probably off and on. At the same time, I was I keying its translation, so I'm happy enough to put it right on there. So I'll do add attribute, modify attribute, IK, I'll do FK, IK. I'm going to set it to the exact same option, 0 to 1. And apply that. It looks great. And I'll just open up the connection editor. Now what I'm going to do is load in that control on the left. Load in the IK on the right, scrub down to FK IK, scroll down to IK blend. There she is. Connect them up together. And now I can control that IK blending directly on this control here. So if I put it over, now I'm at IK, now I'm at FK. Let's put it back to zero. There we go. Great. Alright. Now the other thing I want to do is take care of the rotations that are going on in this joint. If we look from the front view, front view, there we go, and I rotate my FK wrist, you notice that my FK wrist rotates more than my joint. And if I rotate my IK wrist, it also rotates that joint. Basically what's happening is I have two controls that are that this joint is orient constraint. Under the orient constraint, you'll notice you have IK control, weight zero, and FK control, weight one. And what happens is, is the relationship of these two that tells it who to respond to. So if I turn FK wrist off by putting a zero in there, and now I rotate with the IK control, you notice it's an exact match. If I rotate the FK, I get nothing. And the true holds for the opposite. 
FK to is 1, IK to 0, FK is 100% match, and IK has no control over whatsoever. So I'm going to tie that into that same switch, that FK IK switch that we created. So what I'm going to do is go back to my contention editor, put the IK control on the left, I'll select that joint, and just by doing out an arrow over arrow, I can get this or I can straight node, and I'll load that in on the right hand side. And you'll find your controls at the bottom. So FK IK risk goes into IK control, because it's going to be the same thing. When this is off, I want this to be off as well. And now I have to do a connection between here. There's a number of different ways I can do that. The way I like to do it is using utility nodes. So I'm going to open up my hypergraph, or hypershade, either one is fun. And over here in the Create Maya nodes, I'm going to find my utilities. There we are, General Utilities. I'm going to scroll down to find what's called a reverse node. That's this guy here. And basically what this does is if I give it 0, it gives me 1. If I give it 1, it gives me 0. If I give it 0.5, it gives me 0.5. And it mixes between the two. So 0.7, it gives me 0.3. And I'm going to use that in between my IK control here. and my ORing constraint. So I'm going to go from the FK IK controller of my IK handle to the input X of my reverse. What I'm going to do is load that reverse on the left hand side, output X, and I'm going to load that into that ORing constraint like we did before, down and over. Let's scroll down to find my FK wrist. There it is. So output X, I'm going to go to FK wrist. Great. So now you can see it automatically puts one in there. So let's graph this to see what that looks like. So here's my control, here's the reverse, here's that constraint. So now what happens is, if I'm on AK, my wrist should follow, as well as the rest of my arm, based on IK, exactly what I'm doing with this arm. If I put it to zero, my FK is going to completely control my arm, which is exactly what we want. Now what you'll have noticed when I'm in FK mode is when I rotate my elbow that my wrist stays behind. I don't really want that. I want it to match exactly to what I'm doing with my arms. So what I'm going to do is just pair up these controls to match what my joint chain is doing. So I'll go to this FK wrist and I'm going to jump up onto its group and I'm actually going to parent it under the elbow control itself by hitting P. So now if I rotate my elbow, my wrist goes along and my wrist stays in line. This looks correct. Let's just zero those out. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing with the elbow. I'm going to elbow, go up one, shift select my shoulder control, and parent it. So now it follows underneath the whole arm. So now basically I can pose this arm using FK as I would normally, and I can switch it over to IK if I want to put his hand on a table or something like that. Perfect. So now I've created all the controls that I want. There I go, back to zero. And let's do a little bit of cleanup. We have a lot of things floating around out here that we don't really need. So what I'm going to do is, first thing is take this IK control, or IK handle, and just hide it. I don't need to see it anymore. I'm going to grab these joints and turn off their logo rotation display. We don't need to see that. I think my controls have that. I'm going to shut it off on those as well. And I have it on my IK handle. I'll turn that off there too. And I'm going to set some of these channels so that we only have the ones we want keyable. So I'll select these three controls. And I basically only want rotate. So I'll select these guys and say right click, lock and hide. Select my IK handle, get rid of the scales of the VB, lock and hide. Great. Alright. I just want to finish by grouping some of this stuff up together. So what I'm going to do is take that null there and rename it to group IK wrist so I know what it is. I'm going to take the shoulder joint and the group FK control and group them together. And it puts the pivot at zero by default. So what I'm going to do is hit insert and snap it right up to the top of my shoulder there. And this group is what I'm going to use to connect to the, my, my arm or my skeleton or my clavicle depending on what my character looks like. So for this character he'd have a clavicle right here. I would just group those two together. So I can take this and if I move it, this is an FK. If I turn on IK, 
move that group around, it's going to act as if it's stuck to that table there. And the IK wrist and the pull vector, I'm sorry, the IK wrist and the pull vector stay outside. Group arm. Whoops. There we go. And that's basically a whole arm. I can go back in here and clean some of this up. What I'm going to do is uh, fix this guy. Now that I've already created a constraint on there, it's a little dangerous to hold down J and freeze it. As you can see, it won't let me because I've locked scales. But also, I tend not to do things like that once I've already applied the constraints. So instead, what I'm going to do is hold down and select the vertices and just rotate the vertices so that this makes more sense. There we go. I like that much better.